everyone. It's me, Andrew. I'm here in my home in lovely Ligonier, Pennsylvania. Um, and we're a little bit later today because I, I am taking a workshop at Touchstone Center for Crafts in Farmington, Pennsylvania with Harlan Butt. And we're learning how to do cloisonne and uh, we're doing cloisonne on uh, discs. And then the more complicated one is uh, cloisonne on a vessel, which is a little bit tricksy. Um, I'm having a lot of fun. I'm learning a lot. It's a little bit of, um, uh, it's, a, it's a very um, meditative class. There's a lot of repetition in what you do. Um, and I always think that with enamel, it's a little bit like a mysterious kind of magic because you can do everything right. And then you do, then for some reason it turns out different. Um, so it's, it's a little bit, you know, you never know, but I've been having a lot of fun with that. Uh, it is a lot to do because I get up pretty early for me. I get up pretty early and then I drive an hour down to touchstone and then I'm there all day and then drive an hour back. So I'm a little bit, it makes me a little bit tired, but we're here now. So hopefully you all are having a great week so far. Um, if you didn't see yesterday's video, William uh, did a tutorial, or not really a tutorial, kind of a play along with his new dye sublimation. He was trying to do a mug um, and you know, he, he just got it and is working with it. Um, so he's, you know, little by little. Um, the bird builds its nest and learns dye sublimation. Um, so that's pretty cool. I've got some ideas for him later when, once he masters the technique and gets everything um, that he needs. And um, yeah, so there, uh, yesterday he did that. And then this past Saturday um, was Jen's tutorial. Did you all see that? Um, she did a tutorial on macrame, which is pretty cool. Um, I, I've seen a couple people in the Allegory Gallery Design Challenge group um, use that uh, technique, and that's pretty cool. I haven't been online very much, um, and usually when I am online, it's really just like popping on and popping off real quick. Um, but yeah, so that was on Saturday. Um, today is the 25th, and that means that today is the last day to take advantage of the Christmas and July sale. So if you did not do that, you still have a little bit of time, but the clock is ticking. So if you are planning to use that 25% off coupon code, um, today's the last day to do that. And I don't know when the next time we're going to have a sale. So... Um, if you've been, if you've had your eye on something, uh, try to take advantage of it now before the sale goes away. Otherwise, it's back to normal prices, um, which we try to keep our prices as low as possible, so it's not too too wild. But you know, it is what it is. If you're watching, uh, please say hello and maybe where you're tuning in from. It's always nice to hear where people are watching, um, and it's always nice if people like and share and all that fun stuff to help boost the signal on what we're doing because we're just a little itty bitty bead store in a tiny little town your friendly neighborhood bead store and um you know every little bit helps and if we can like blow up the signal that helps a lot um anyways oh i see sandra's watching hi sandra I know she's in Miami. Um, so yeah, we I've been doing the class at Touchstone. Uh, it's a lot of fun. I'm learning a lot, um, uh, and it's been a, it's been an, it's been a good time. Um, it's been really nice to get to know uh, some of my fellow classmates and uh, hearing about where they're from, and it's pretty cool. So I, I've really enjoyed 
getting to know my fellow classmates. Some of them have been enameling for years and years and years. So they have tons and tons of experience. Um, me, I've only been really enameling. I, um, I took uh, Barbara Lewis's um, immersion enameling technique maybe 12 years ago. And I did that um, for a while and I enjoyed that, but I didn't, it, you know, there's, I mean, you can do a lot with it, but I kind of reached a point where I had kind of reached my max with it. So, um, so then it kind of sat there for a while. I haven't really enameled very much. And then I started enameling uh, probably um, in 2021, the end of 2021, I started taking a class in Pittsburgh and started building up my skills. And I've been super fortunate. I took a wonderful workshop last summer with Tanya Crane, um, who is an amazing inspiration. And I've just tried to been building up my information knowledge and fill in some gaps since I'm mostly uh, self-directed. I'm not self-taught because I've been taking classes a couple places, but I've been self-directed. That's my new little catchphrase. I see Robin's watching. Hi, Robin. Uh, Sandra says, finally got AC back. The AC people just left. Oh, good. I'm glad to hear that you're staying nice and cool. It's been wild here. Sometimes it's hot and then it drops down pretty cold. Um, up in Touchstone, when I go in the morning, um, it's a little bit chilly sometimes. And this morning, uh, it was raining here. And then I crossed this like imaginary line um, over in Stallstown, I think. And it just stopped raining all of a sudden, which was pretty, pretty crazy to me. Um, but I guess that's because we're in the mountains and, you know, there's the orographical effect, I think that's called. And anyway, so I'm not a meteorologist. I just pretend to be one on our lives. Um, anyway, so we, um, I've been having fun taking the workshop. Uh, I don't, I haven't gotten as much done as I would like, but, um, you know, I'm trying. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, who else is watching? Oh, another Robin's watching. She says, hey, hi, gang, 118 here in Tempe. Oh, boy. No, thank you. You can probably do enameling outside on the sidewalk. Um, that's wild. Um, yeah, so uh, I don't want to stay too, too late because I want to go over to the cottage, even though I'm busted up tired. I still want to go to the cottage and get some work done uh, so that I'm not too far behind for tomorrow. It's been really cool because Harlan, um, he studied in Japan. And so a lot of his techniques are very influenced by um, the Japanese way of making things. And so he starts the class out with doing haikus. So one of our homework assignments is to write haikus and then in the morning kind of share our haikus and nice mellow way of kind of like getting started. Um, and at first I was like, I don't know about this haiku business. Um, you know, I kind of think like in my mind, I think of like in the third grade when we used to make haikus and then, um, you know, uh, I'm like, I just want to learn the enameling. But uh, I do think that it's beneficial in the sense that it's kind of an easy kind of, it eases us into the day and starts things off on a kind of a positive note. I also think it makes people um, in the workshop um, slow down a little bit and pay more attention to different things, you know, like, you know, things that they see along the way coming into class and, or things that they've experienced or 
Um, so not only is it kind of a way to ease into this, but it's also a little bit of an icebreaker. So we can talk about things and um, yeah, I think it's pretty cool. I see some more folks have tuned in. Rosie's watching. Hi, Rosie. Um, Cheryl's watching. Hi, Cheryl. Um, she said, we also, we are also melting. So crafty time just isn't happening. I can't wait till autumn. Yeah, autumn is one of my favorite times. It's kind of um, strange to think about it, but um, it's already starting to turn here. I don't know if uh, y'all are noticing it or not, but um, so I drive every day pretty much down to Touchstone and um, I've been noticing changes like the sumac are blooming and some of them are turning colors already, which is, I'm like, what? Where, where is summer going? Um, but I can't, I, I, you know, I like it the, a little bit cooler. So, and autumn is my favorite time. Like Halloween is like my favorite, favorite, favorite time of year. So, um, yeah. But I do like taking classes and usually the classes are in summer. So maybe I have a new favorite time of year now. I used to love Halloween time used to be the favorite. And now it's like workshop time is the favorite. So maybe uh, that's summer. All right. So I'm going to just flip the camera around and we're going to get started. How about it? Um, this is pretty basic. So if you've, if you've um, done it, any kind of seed beating, this is probably one of the first projects that a lot of people do. Um, but if you haven't made this, I, I really encourage everybody to try it because it's a really, it's a pretty easy um, technique. Um, you learn about decreases and you also do, it's not just brick stitch, it's also ladder stitch, um, but it's mostly brick stitch, but that's how you get started. Um, Cheryl or uh, Brooks watching. Hey, Brooke. Um, so since y'all are just tuning in, I'm going to remind folks, um, Brooks said that or flat peyote stitch. That's another one. Even count uh, peyote stitch is one of the, I would say one of my first uh, stitches was spiral stitch. And then let's see, then what else? Then what did we do? Um, Square stitch, brick stitch, peyote stitch, herringbone stitch. The herringbone can be a little bit tricksy sometimes. And then we start doing like combination stitches. So, um, yeah. Uh, this summer, since I've been mostly um, tuning in from home and I've been on much more lately, I've been going through a lot of seed bead basics. So we've been covering a lot of ground. Usually um, we used to do this as a class and people would get little kits and they would come, you know, once a week and we would have classes and it was like $25 a person every week and you got to take your beads home and, um, and it was like two hours uh, every Thursday. I can't remember. It's been so long, but, um, yeah, we did that for a while and it was a lot of fun. Uh, and we might get back into it once things kind of settle down. My goal is to open, uh, the new business in Johnstown this fall, sometime this fall. So we're kind of full steam ahead on that. And, um, I'm taking workshops. So it's kind of like this game of juggling, um, but we're somehow maybe making progress little by little. So, yeah, so we, so it's, it's, uh, once that gets open and our schedules kind of regulate, um, then I can, we can start doing more in-person classes. And if you haven't joined the mailing list, I do encourage you to do so. Um, head on over after the video to www.allegorygallery.com and scroll down to the bottom. There should be a prompt that pops up, but sometimes people have like pop-up blockers put on their, their browsers and different things like that. But 
Um, if you don't get a prompt, you can always scroll down to the bottom and sign up there. Um, and it'll say sign up for our newsletter. And that's a really wonderful way to stay in contact with us and keep in the loop. Especially, excuse me, especially if you miss a live or, you know, something happens, uh, the newsletter is a really wonderful resource. All right. Um, Brooke says, it took me a while for me to get the tension right on my herringbone stitch. That's a common issue. I mean, tension is one of those things where most, most seed beading, you need to have the right tension. Otherwise, it looks a mess. I mean, you can sometimes fix it, but most of the time it will not only be kind of like a deflated balloon, but it will also um, be kind of weak. So tension is not only important for an aesthetic, it's also for a structure as well. So um, it's one of those things where you just have to keep trying and uh, the more you do it, the better you get at getting that sense of, of what you're doing. Um, today, we're gonna be using cube beads, cube seed beads, and it makes this fly by. It, it's super fast, super easy. The beads are, they call them cubes, but they're really more rectangular. Um, and they just lock together super, super fast, super easy. Um, and you can have a ton of fun plotting out different designs in them, um, adding fringe off of the bottom. You can sew them together and make pyramids. Um, you can do a lot of things with this. Now, um, one of the reasons why I'm showing this is that because um, there is a decrease. And so sometimes when people are working with brick stitch, they get confused when it comes to decreases and increases. So I'm going to show you and um, hopefully you enjoy these. Um, I've been having fun because I don't... Um, seed beating is one of those things that takes more time for me. Usually I do stuff that's a little bit more immediate. Um, so I don't always have a lot of time to do it. So it's been nice to kind of revisit these things and play around with them and, you know, start making things with these seed bead stitches. Um, and yeah. All right. So one more thing before I flip the camera around is that we have... Um, uh, we have a prompt going on this month, all month long. It's called Beat in the New Year, and it's the Summer of Fantasy Edition. And I believe today is Make Something with like a, a sound effect. Um, so whether you make a whistle or you make uh, something with a bell or a chime or something that clacks together... Um, there's a lot of different things that you can do to incorporate sound into a design. Um, I think sometimes when we think about jewelry, we think about how things look, but sometimes we don't think about things like movement and, sh uh, you know, sound and smell. And so I think it's a kind of a cool way to think about a design and incorporate that as an element that drives you into making something. All right, I'm gonna flip the camera around. You're gonna see the ceiling for a little bit and then we're gonna get busy. And hopefully everybody's been doing well out there. I know that with me taking classes, I don't know, it feels a little bit, feels a little bit wild because, um, I don't know, it feels like I've, it's been so long since I've been on on the live, but it's not been that long. It's only Tuesday, but I've been doing lives almost every day lately. So, um, yeah. All right. So I'm going to start with some fire line. Um, and again, if you ever need anything. Um, just let us know. You can always email us at info at Allegory Gallery if you can't find it using the search function on our website. 
Our website is allegorygallery.com. We have thousands of products listed. Um, so we hope folks take advantage of that. We do have that sale going on right now. It ends tonight. Tonight's the last, last little bit. So if you miss that, then it's going to go back to regular price, which we try to keep everything still affordable. But just so you know, tonight's the last night to take advantage of the coupon code in our online store only. All right. So uh, we're going to need some fire line for our project. I'm going to cut off about uh, not quite a wingspan. Usually I start with a wingspan, but I don't think I'm going to need all that. I'm just going to cut off an arm's length. Um, I may be shooting myself in the foot right now, but I think I'm just going to need an arm's length because I'm not going to be doing too, too much embellishment on these. So uh, I don't need the full, the full shebang just yet. All right. Here we go. I'm going to cut this off. And I'm going to thread my needle. All right. Oh, I got it, and then I pulled it out. All right. So if you want, you can add a, be a stop bead, but I don't actually think... Let me lower this down a little bit. So I don't think we're going to actually need a stop bead for this project. And I'm going to try to be mindful of the colors that I pick so that we can get um, a good sense of things. All right. So I'm going to pick up two of these cube beads. And I'm just going to string them up so that I have about four or five inches. And then what I'm going to do is that the tail is coming out this side. Well, I'm going to fold these over so that they are next to each other like so. And then I'm going to go up through the first bead that I strung up, all right? And then now I'm going to go down through the second bead. And then I'm going to pick up another bead. All right. And I'm going to go, um, since I'm coming down through this bead, I'm going to go back down through it so that um, we come out and sister that right next to each other. And if it comes out, it's a little bit wonky like that. Just gently put it into place and then go back up through that third bead that we just added. And that's, we're basically, we're doing ladder stitch. And ladder stitch is one of those fundamentals where everything kind of gets locked together. All right, so we're gonna add another bead to our sequence here. So I'm gonna pick up one of these little matte root beer beads and I'm gonna go up through that bead and then down through the one that we just added. All right, and we're gonna repeat this process until we have a total of, um, let's say, seven beads, all right? So that's one, two, three, four. We just pick one up, that's five. We're gonna go down through that bead and then up through the bead oop, and actually go through it. So there you go. And make sure if it's kind of off to the side, you kind of nestle that into place. And since these are cube beads, they work great because they want to lock together and they want to be in a straight line. Uh, so uh, sometimes when you're doing like the rocals and stuff, they're a little bit, um, you know, they kind of want to do their own thing. But um, with these ones, they work so easy breezy. So I just added a bead. And I want to make sure that I'm adjusting my tension so that there isn't any big gaps. Because if there are big gaps, it's harder to fix that later 
than it is to do that now. And what we're doing right now is we're doing brick stitch and that's how we get the first row down, all right? So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. We're gonna add one more. And then I'm gonna start, um, we're gonna go down through the previous bead and then we're gonna go up through the bead that we just added. All right, so then we can start thinking about the next row. All right, so we've done seven in this row. So let's pick up one of these matte green beads. Normally when you do brick stitch, you're going to want to um, add two beads when you start a row. That keeps everything nice and even. However, since we want a decrease, I'm gonna pick up just one, only one. All right, so we're gonna zoom in on the top row and you can see in between each of these beads is a thread bridge, all right? In between each of these beads is a thread bridge. So I'm going to string up my first bead and then I'm gonna pick up Go underneath that thread bridge and then up through the bead that we just added. All right. And this may feel weird, but it's pretty cool, I think. All right. And I'm going to make sure that my tension is right, so I'm gonna pull kind of tight, and then I'm gonna pick up another one of the beads in my second row, and I'm gonna go, I'm gonna pick that thread bridge up next to this one, and I'm gonna pull it tight, and then come up through the bottom of this bead that we just added. All right. And then I'm gonna make sure that it's nice and tight my tension's nice and tight so it doesn't come apart, get wavy gravy style. I'm gonna pick up another one, pick up that thread bridge, and then go up through that bead. Y'all have seen me do brick stitch, or maybe if you're new to us, this is how you do brick stitch. Um, brick stitch is really nice because you go in between, it looks like the beads are, are in between the previous one, kind of like how you lay bricks. It makes a nice, really sturdy foundation for things. So um, that's a good, it's a good basic to learn. And then once you get this down and you're comfortable with regular rows and decreases, then you can do uh, pictorial things. So if you wanted to do like a character, you can do a character, it's pretty cool. All right, so I have added one, two, three, four, and five. I'm gonna do another. I'm gonna pick up one more to complete this row. So I picked up one of my seed beads, one of my cubes. I'm gonna go under that thread bridge and then up through that sixth bead. And then I'm gonna come up through there like so, and I'm gonna be ready for my third row. All right, let's do one of these lined beads. So I'm just gonna add this, pick up that thread bridge, just the way we did it before. And I'm gonna go up through that bead that we just added. And then I'm gonna kind of uh, pull it a little bit tight. Sometimes you don't wanna do that, but with this one, you wanna be pretty tight. So I'm picking up a bead. I'm gonna go under that thread bridge, up through the bead we just added and pull tight. Make sure it's nice and snug so nothing comes apart, nothing's loose. Um, I'm using cube beads today because it makes it really, really easy to learn this stitch. This is um, one of those ones that if you use this 
super easy to learn with cube beads. It's a little bit trickier with row cows or kind of rounded beads, but with this one, easy breezy, you can do this almost in your sleep. All right, and so we're just going to, um, we've got one more bead to add in this third row. And then we're gonna go into our next row. See how fast this is? Told y'all, it's quick. Um, I hope you all enjoy this. If you haven't done the stitch before, and if you haven't used the cube beads, I definitely recommend it. Um, it's one of those ones that's very satisfying. It's very fun. This comes together very quickly. All right, so I'm gonna pick up a bead. I'm gonna start the fourth row. And in the fourth row, there are four beads. All right. We picked up the thread bridge. We're gonna go up through this bead. And like I said earlier, normally when you do a new row for brick stitch, um, you don't you want to start with two beads. But with a decrease, we're only picking up one. And that's how we get that decrease. Um, if I picked up two to start two beads to start that row, it would be a square or kind of a rectangle. But this, we want a triangle. All right. So one of the easy things to mess up with is not to go underneath the thread bridge. Sometimes um, it can feel like we're going through the thread bridge or up underneath the thread bridge, but then for some reason we don't. That's the most common and easiest thing that happens. But um, so if that happens and just go underneath that thread bridge and then go back up through your piece. All right, so we're starting in the fifth row. In the fifth row, we only have three beads that we're adding. So well, I told you we're cooking with gas, y'all. This is a quick one. Normally when I've got CB project, people are like, oh my gosh, she's gonna be here for the end of eternity. Um, and yeah, they're, they're right. Sometimes it does take a while. A lot of times I finish things off camera because it just takes so long um, and it's pretty re repetitive. Um, but with these ones, it's quick, y'all. All right, so the next row is going to be our one, two, three, four, and five. It's going to be our sixth row. And um, we're going to use, we're going to have two beads in our sixth row, right? All right. So here we go. We're going to pick up one bead, go under that thread bridge, and then we're going to go up through our seed bead. All right. And um, yeah. And again, if anybody ever needs anything bead related, you know where to find us. Email us at info at Allegory Gallery and we can hook you up with whatever you're looking for. All right, so I've got this. It's a little a tiered section. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So our seventh row, we've got some options. So we can A, I can um, finish, add one more, and then finish this off, and then do some kind of beaded loop. Um, it, th there's a lot of different options. One way that I like to finish things off is I get a little bit of a bigger bead. This is a size three, I think. These are a little bit larger. Um, maybe is that, I think that's a size three. I can't tell. It's been so long that the, the label faded, but it is a larger bead. And if you don't have these, that's all right. Um, you can use whatever, as long as it's got an ample enough hole. 
But I like to just thread this through and then go down through it one more time. Go down through the bead next to it. Go up through the bead we just added or the in the, that, that row there. Make it nice and tight and repeat that two to three times. These beads have nice ample holes. So it's pretty, you know, you don't have to worry about splitting a bead. Um, so just go in there and make sure you do it at least a couple times. And the reason why you want to do it a couple times passing it through is it makes a nice sturdy connection. So you don't end up having a problem. Sometimes I see beadwork that's really beautiful, but the way that things are put together, it's really held together with, a, it's hanging by a thread, y'all. Um, and you don't want your beadwork hanging by a thread. All right. So I've went through this probably four or five times, actually. Um, and there's a nice, healthy, um, I don't know if you can see that or not, but because I'm using a smoke colored thread, but I've gone through here several times and it's nice and thick. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn that on the side. I'm gonna pick that up for that thread bridge. I'm gonna put my needle under that and I'm gonna go up through this like so. I'm gonna add my half hitch knot. I call these anchor knots. I'm gonna go through my bead here, my big bead. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. That's going to make it nice and secure. So if you want to get your thread zapper out, you can get your thread zapper out. I never have batteries on hand, so I just use scissors. Sometimes there's a little bit of a tail. I don't super care uh, myself. If it's long, then maybe. And then this is a nice little, little component that you have here, a little triangular component. If you want to take this tail, there's a little bit of a tail and you can do a little bit of a decorative edge on here with some smaller beads. So um, I didn't leave myself a great big long tail. So I'm not gonna do anything super wild because I don't really have the thread to do so. But there you go. So super easy peasy. Um, if you want, you can go through. I'm going to put this through my needle. I'm going to thread my needle real quick. And then um, I'm going to put this through. And then I'm going to add a little knot. Like so. Pick that up, that thread bridge that we put in our original ladder stitch foundation. I'm going to put that there like so. I'm going to pull it tight. And then I'm going to trim it. And then I'm going to be done. What? Told you. It's going to be fast. All right. So this is a little, little thing. If you wanted to add fringe, um, I've shown how to add fringe. You can add a pico stitch on the edge, which is a decorative finish um, to the edge there. And when you take three beads, you go up through that one bead, you go down through, add three beads, go back up and keep doing that. And it adds a little fun, little fringy thing on the end, a um, little decorative thing. Or you can just leave it plain and it's um, kind of geometric. Now, if you want, you can use this for a couple different things. If you wanted to do a multi-strand bracelet, Great way to do that if you want to have uh, this be for a multi-strand necklace. Um, you know, you have to do a little bit of figuring because um, you, this is if you just string beads on the fire line and you don't weave, it's not going to be strong enough, y'all. You know, it's going to be one of those things where it gets caught minorly, and then it's going to be you're going to be picking up beads off the carpet. Um, so if you do anything, you would probably want to use a flexible beading wire. And what I would probably do is I would run it up through one bead here, run it back down through this one, and then add the crimp bead here on this side, and then string that up. And this is pretty solid because we did a ladder stitch in our foundation right there. Our ground floor is done with ladder stitch, so it's pretty sturdy. Um, and then you can have a multi-strand um, necklace. You can also make like a, a 
a, a like a tassel-y type of thing where you do some add some fringe here or like i said you can have a bracelet and you could do regular brick stitch off of this because you've got um you know, you have the, your thread bridges off the bottom here. If you do that and you want it to be kind of go um, and not have the decrease, remember, add two beads when you start a new row and you'll be adding, it'll be adding a total of seven beads across and then you can do a fun pattern and you can graph that out. And there you go. What I'm gonna do to finish these off, I'm gonna do this super easy, super simple. I've got some gunmetal um, ear wires. I love lever back ear wires. I've got some gunmetal jump rings here. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to get my pliers here. Hold one side stationary. Pivot to open it up. Run that along the top there, making sure not to catch any of the threads. Put my, attack, um, put my ear wire on. Hold the side stationary and then pivot it closed. And then that is your like, not was it 10 minutes or so? I talked for a while. So, so 10 minute earrings, you've got this kind of mod color scheme, kind of retro 70s color scheme. It's very popular Argyle time. Um, and yeah, so if you want to do that, you can do that. So I'm going to make the other one off camera. I mean, I could do it now, um, and it wouldn't take too, too much long, but I'm going to just, uh, I'm going to, um, actually, um, do that matching one off camera. And then if you want a refresh on how to do this, just watch the video again, put it on the replay. So I'm just going to follow the exact same steps that I just completed and just showed you all. Um, and yeah, it was super fast. Um, so I hope you enjoyed these quick and easy, very, very easy uh, brick stitch triangular uh, earring components. You could do something else with them, but I'm going to use these for earrings. All right. Hope you have a great rest of your evening. Um, I don't know if William will be on tomorrow. He has his ceramics class, and I don't know if I'm staying late tomorrow at Touchstone. If I don't stay late, I'll try to pop on. I wish I could show you on Touchstone, but um, sometimes the internet is not super great. It's out in the woods, and there is a signal, um, but sometimes it's not great for streaming. And when you have a, bun a campus full of people, it can get bogged down. So um, I don't know if I can go live from Touchstone. I can try. I can try to show you the Small Metal Studio tomorrow. Um, when maybe I'll ask Carlin if he wants to talk about his work a little bit. I don't know if he's into that or not. Um, he's a pretty humble guy, so I don't know. But um, I can always ask. And yeah, so thanks so much for watching. We hope you have a great rest of your evening. And again, if you're looking for anything in the online store, that's www.allegorygallery.com, you can take advantage of uh, the coupon code, which is Xmas in July, and save 25% off your order. It's probably the largest sale we've had in a while. And it probably will be one of the last uh, sales that we have for a good while until, I don't know, when's the next time we have something? Next time will probably be our anniversary sale, and that will be in the middle of September. So 
Um, yeah, that's a while. So if you need anything, stock up today. Take advantage of that coupon code. Take advantage of that sale. And um, yeah. All right. So I'm going to go. Have a great rest of your evening. And I'll see you later. See ya.